Hey Internet, welcome back to our We Adventure Fly UK 2021. This is day two. Now, unfortunately, I either forgot to press the record button on this day, or I deleted the file, or I've lost the SD card somewhere over the hills and the locks of Scotland. Um, so, unfortunately, there's not very much uh, video footage for this particular trip. However, the Sandy Squadron, we uh, took lots of photographs and a few small clips using our handheld cameras. So I've tried to put something together so we can see the really picturesque uh, coastline, the west coastline of Scotland and some of the hills. Uh, and you can also see how that's quite different to the east coast. So today we're going to be flying from Athysmore up the northeast coast, heading across the border into Scotland. Then we're going to stop off at Fife, which is just north of Edinburgh, and then head west which will take us over the uh, northern edge of Edinburgh's airspace and Glasgow, hit the coastline, follow that up to the northwest and onto the Isle of Mull to Glenforsa Airfield, uh, which has an amazing airstrip uh, and a great bar hotel uh, and everything there. So we start the morning off uh, getting ready and uh, lining up on the runway to take off from Athys Moor. Then from there we're going to head over a few of the moors and the first thing we're going to see is Lindisfarne Castle uh, and then uh, right after that we'll see Lindisfarne Priory. Then we'll see what looks like an iceberg and uh, on the radio we're talking to each other and we actually thought it was an iceberg initially and realised it was Bass Rock, which isn't actually a white rock, it's uh, white because the seagulls have been living there for some time uh, and there's a big colony of gannet seagulls uh, living on there. So we follow the coast round and some of the group take a shortcut straight across the Firth of Forth just outside controlled airspace, I decided to take a uh, route overhead Edinburgh and then through the overhead of Edinburgh International Airport. And the nice folk at Edinburgh Air Traffic Control allowed me to transit directly overhead via various visual reference points and then straight to the north using the bridges as my main visual reference point. So right after the bridges at the north of Edinburgh, I bared slightly to the northeast and headed directly to Fife Airfield. At Fife, we were able to refuel the aircraft and ourselves with plenty of coffee, tea and cakes. Ready for the next leg of the journey that took us west uh, over the northern edge of Edinburgh and Glasgow's airspace. I took a shortcut just to the north of Glasgow over some of the higher ground and uh, then all of a sudden the scenery just opens up and you can see these uh, small islands dotted around the coastline and uh, it just looks absolutely fantastic. What you'll notice here is that there's uh, lots of small harbours dotted around up this west coast where the boats are able to uh, hide from the harsh weather and uh, sea conditions. Um, another common sight we'll see along uh, this particular coastline are the circular salmon nets and uh, I'll show you in a few minutes that uh, you can actually see the salmon jumping out of the water as you fly over them. You also notice as we go over some of the beaches how clear the water is. You can actually see through it just like it's uh, crystal clear tap water. And then the beaches are absolutely out of this world. It looks like white sand 
uh, and very inviting to dive into and swim around. Although I do know it is Scotland and it's probably very cold down there, uh, but it just looks absolutely amazing and you wouldn't expect that along the British coastline, but I didn't anyway. So this part of the flight I remember very well from the first time I flew up the west coast a few years ago. This is the Clacken Sound and there's a small bridge built in the 1700s that crosses the waterway over to the Isle of Seal. And the, as you can see from the video and the photos here, that the Isle of Seal is actually surrounded by water other than this bridge. So it has the nickname, the bridge over the Atlantic, uh, because the Atlantic actually joins it at the north and south area as well. This particular journey there's two people standing on the top of the bridge waving at us. And here we can see the ruins of Gylan Castle. There's not much left of it now, but I believe you can actually get to it on foot if you're on the island. So yet again, another salmon farm here on the west coast of Scotland. Uh, so with a little bit of zoom, we can uh, look at that closer on the camera and see the salmon are jumping out of the nets. Sorry about it being uh, so shaky, it's kind of hard to zoom in with the camera while flying an airplane.
Jack discovered a boat sunbathing on its side in the sea. destination for the day, Glenforsa Airfield on the Isle of Mull. So you'll notice that everyone has faced their aircraft forward to look over the water and sea uh, because the view here it really is absolutely amazing. Nothing better than having some mackerel while watching the mackerel jumping out of the ocean in front of you. I recorded this time-lapse video to watch the sun set and then the sun rise uh, over the north of the Isle of Mull from Glenforsa. Uh, so you can see the amazing scenery here and the cloud is constantly swirling around and changing direction continuously. Now what we notice the next morning is how the weather can change very very quickly. Uh, one minute it can be completely blue sky, it looks absolutely amazing and then uh, half an hour later it's just uh, cloudy and uh, not ideal flying conditions. That comes back to haunt us actually the next day when we try to depart uh, Glenforsa and we find there's a fog bank. Uh, on our return there's a wild animal occupying the runway. We occupy the runway ourselves, have mechanical issues, fix a tyre and various other shenanigans happen as well. So uh, I'll see you in day three and uh, thanks for watching. So I recorded this time-lapse video to get an idea of the sunset and the sunrise. Now, it's interesting to see when watching this back how the cloud just keeps on swirling around and the um, direction of the clouds and the wind is changing continuously. 
Now, it only takes really a few minutes for the weather here to just change completely.